During this series of videos, I will be looking high and low to find the best mobile MMO, which is actually worth sinking time into. The design philosophy of mobile versus desktop games is so different that it can almost hinder a game's success. If they took more inspiration from desktop gaming and why the systems work, they could land on a gold mine. I want to find that gold mine. Find that developer that has nailed perfection. Also, remember the connectivity of these devices nowadays are so good. You can literally have Bluetooth mice and keyboards, controllers, and even game pads now work with iPads, other tablets, or phone. Will it be World of Kings that nails perfection? Let's find out. Greeted with a cinematic intro so poorly optimized, I thought I was running this game on a Nokia 3210. I was instantly worried. But I'd read on top 10 lists all over the internet that this game was the closest thing to World of Warcraft mobile you could get. And as a World of Warcraft player, I had to start here. I was playing this game on a brand new iPad Pro, by the way, so I would expect a nice, smooth, cinematic intro, which I just did not get. Onto the character creation screen, though. This looked beautiful, with numerous classes. Wait, what the... What is this? Oh, it's a furry. I mean, a furry. They couldn't think of a better name than furry. Okay, I won't be making that. After much deliberation and watching all the intro videos for each race, which are very well done in my opinion, I settled with a Dwarf Rogue. Scanning through all the abilities of the classes, you really can see the resemblance to World of Warcraft. Even the fact that it looks like Orcs start in the Barrens, or something very similar. The Humans start in what can only be described as Northshire Valley from Elwyn Forest, picked up and dropped in Valley of the Four Winds, from Mr. Pandaria, by the way, and dwarves definitely have some gnomish inspiration here from Dun Morrow. 30 seconds into making the character and I thought I had Numlock stuck down, because the character just wanted to do its own thing. It runs from quest to quest, and there's even an option to set your rotation. So it's literally a game that you don't even need to play. Fast forward 70 levels when I'm in a dungeon and you're watching all five players in the dungeon path exactly the same way because no one is even playing the game for their self. This was a massive put off for me, especially when I turned the option off or what I would have assumed to have turned it off and stopped doing all these shenanigans on its own only to be disappointed that it just can't be turned off. The most frustrating thing here is even if you make a conscious decision to actually play the game and not use autopilot and auto combat features, it still periodically tried to take over for me. So let's say I ran to a quest and that quest involved a vehicle. I'd get out of that vehicle after the quest is complete and then boom, my character starts trying to run all over the world for me again. It's not just questing and combat though. It tries to open quest rewards. It tries to equip gear. The gear that it would assume is better for you, or what the game thinks is better for you anyway. So there's just no point in even worrying about any of it. If you don't click the equip button in about 10 seconds, it just equips it anyway. This really hinders your ability to understand the game because you never need to look at anything. You never need to navigate what I would go as far as saying is a gorgeous world because graphically, this game is actually pretty good. And even the classes, they have interesting mechanics. Abilities all look and feel different, but you don't need to look at them and you don't need to understand them because you don't need to use them. Really disappointing, actually. If it were just auto run to quests, I kind of get that. I would still rather it wasn't in the game at all, but auto combat and doing all the fighting for you, I just don't get at all. MMO players are grindy players by nature, but will always take the path of least resistance to get that extra piece of gear or to get that extra level or farm thousands of gold. If you can do all of this without actually doing it, that's what we'll do. That's why bots are rife in World of Warcraft. It's not just gold farmers on G2G.com using them. Even raiders will fishbot or bot herbs and mines so they get the advantage they want without having to actually do it themselves. Make that option fully automated and with no repercussions and you have World of Botcraft or World of Kings. This really is not the worst part about it yet. Just wait and see what happens to me at level 13. So I was sticking with the game, level 13, going strong, got some skills, keeping up with the systems, understanding how to choose my, my abilities to upgrade or even get into grips with the stats on the gear. And then something happened, something that I was looking forward to. I got a quest that introduced me to crafting. It was a simple food crafting quest, but I do love crafting in games. And generally, these are the things that keep me grinding for hours. You had to make some basic food. You had a little look at the very basic crafting window where you just put a couple of different types of material in and then it outputs the food of choice. Was a little bit annoyed at how basic it was, but at the same time, having crafting to sink some hours into on my way to max level was still a bonus. And then this happened. It instantly used an item I received from a quest and I gained not a level. I didn't just gain a level. I gained 57 levels. 
and the spam commenced on my screen. It was ridiculous. It quite literally leveled me from 15 to 70 and unlocked every system along the way. Up until this point, I hadn't been introduced to stats on gear. No explanation or introduction to dungeons, relics, and tons of other systems that are just now thrown upon me all at once in a very, very overwhelming manner, I might add. I didn't even know what to think. I looked around all these menus trying to make head nor tail of what it all was and why the game constantly kept trying to sell me something now as well. It was trying to sell me stuff before, but now it's just getting ridiculous. I'm having to close down three or four windows at a time before I can move on with a game. There's about 10 icons up the top that you can press on and pretty much all of them try to sell you stuff. You see the little arrow to collapse the screen? Wouldn't it be cool if that worked? It does for about five minutes, but then when you interact with something or start flying somewhere, it just opens up again and reminds you that you can spend money on this game. Really nice of them actually, because I completely forgot that I could spend my money as they hadn't reminded me for 4 minutes and 12 seconds. It was at this point I was lost, seriously. I sat and read through so much of this stuff, but I was given a full level 70 set of gear and every system in the game unlocked all at once that it just didn't feel right at all. I want an introduction to the systems one at a time through the levelling process, and also would have liked the option to level all the way on my own, but with the game just automatically using every item it picks up, I didn't even get to pick an option. It didn't pop up saying, do you want to instant jump to 70? It just did it. I quite literally lolled because it was so unexpected. I did a few dungeons which were giving me currencies and items that I had no idea what to do with. No one spoke in chat in these dungeons. Everyone just autopiloted and left at the end to queue for another one. Overall, the game just doesn't feel rewarding because you aren't having to do anything at all for it to feel rewarding. This was a bad start to my journey to find the best MMO and I have a feeling I'm going to be greeted by lots of these games which might as well be animated stories because for me, a game is something you play, not something you watch. World of Kings is not the best mobile MMO you can find. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to join me on my mission to find the best mobile MMO and until next time, peace out.